Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Castle Keeper Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today I'm uh, making a return to the Character Race Spotlight series uh, for Castles and Crusades and today we're going to be taking a look at Dwarves. So um, this is an iconic race. This is a race that goes back to the earliest beginnings of uh, tabletop role-playing games. And so um, I think there's there's always been this kind of a stereotype of dwarves and a uh, just a an impression that we get from uh, Tolkien's dwarves and such that you know kind of bled its way into, um, let its way into Dungeons and Dragons and and other uh, other variants of fantasy role playing games, and um, you know dwarves obviously go way way back in uh, you know in human history and in uh, in cultural and uh, mythological histories as well, and uh, you know folklore and and all kinds of stuff. So it's it's not just the portrayal from Lord of the Rings that, um, you know, that we should focus on. And what I really liked about Castles and Crusades, and you're going to see this as I go through the description of, you know, of the PDF on dwarves, is that uh, there's a lot more nuance in Castles and Crusades and, and some explanation a little bit more in-depth explanation of some of those stereotypes. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And we are going to switch screens and I will bring you right to the PDF. So uh, I will enlarge this so that you can see it clear. So dwarves hail from the depths of the earth and have lived there for ages beyond count. Much like the stone they resemble, dwarves possess great fortitude and an indomitable will of granite. They are proud, loyal, and honorable people with lives said to be as long as the tunnels they delve beneath wind-soured mountains. Renowned for their stonework and metal crafting, dwarves expend much of their lives perfecting their skills and mining ever deeper for rare ores and gems. There in those dark recesses, the dwarves have unearthed many abominations and clashed with ferocious enemies for the underworld is home to innumerable and usually baneful creatures who consider dwarves their mortal enemies. Description, dwarves resemble the rock and stone they love. They are short, stocky, and muscled from, from years of labor at the forge or from tunneling through the earth. Dwarves grow long beards and mustaches that are considered a symbol of maturity and honor. The most renowned dwarves have great thick beards sweeping to their feet. From hours at the forge and difficult work at the mines, dwarven skin is dark, ruddy, and fissured even at an early age. Their deep-set eyes tend to be blue, hazel, or gray, and sharp enough to pierce the gloom of the underworld. Personality. And, and here's an important aspect where the Troll Lord games kind of explains some of the stereotype that we normally um, hold about dwarves. So personality, dwarves are bound by codes of honor that obligate them to kin and kingdom. They consider themselves eternally beholden to their parents and immediate kin, for their parents brought them into the world. Likewise, the dwarven kingdom serves as both guardian and the source of succor. So an enormous debt is also owed to the dwarf's kingdom and homeland. These are debts many dwarves consider irredeemable. At its most extreme, the code obliges dwarves to sacrifice all in the name of kith, kin, and kingdom, even if the cause is unjust or hopeless. The dwarves are also bound to another code 
that at its simplest requires just compensation to be paid for service dutifully rendered. This code guides all of their business and interpersonal dealings. Dwarves place high value on their skills, both as craftsmen and warriors, and rightly so. Dwarves are meticulous and patient. All possess, all possess an expert's attention to detail and granite determination, regardless of the undertaking at hand. Their expertise in crafting metal or stone is without equal in the world, and their steadfastness in battle is as certain as a mountain is strong. So I, I just want to focus on this one line of how they are uh, meticulous and patient, all possess an expert's attention to detail and granite determination, regardless of the undertaking at hand. That meticulous patience is something that you normally don't see portrayed in dwarves, uh, whether it be the, you know, the Hobbit movies from, you know, from recent past or, you know, other depictions of dwarves uh, as far as that meticulousness and patience, it's, it's very rarely, um, very rarely shown. Uh, they're actually quite the opposite, often shown to be impatient. Um, and the meticulousness is just not represented typically. Uh, they possess an ex expert's attention to detail. Again, you don't normally see that. And that granite determination is usually shown as stubbornness and uh, rather than a more positive um, view of it. So let me continue them. So dwarven stubbornness, which good segue, is nothing more than an expression of the codes of loyalty, debt, obligation, and determination they project into their daily lives. So, yeah, that stubbornness isn't just for the sake of being stubborn. It's kind of a, a, a compiling of their various codes into one thing. So from an outside viewer, it just seems, you know, it might appear to be just, oh, they're just stubborn as a, as a people rather than understanding where that, um, that determination uh, comes from. Dwarves are slow to shift loyalties and loathe breaking oaths, doing so only in dire circumstances. The word of a dwarf is as valuable as gold and gems, flowing from generations of tradition and belief. Many mistake the dwarven disposition for greed and avarice and some believe dwarves simply take advantage of all they can in both business and in war. In reality, the dwarven personality stems from a sense of duty, loyalty, and just compensation enforced by century, centuries of tradition. So again, digging a little deeper beyond the, uh, the very surface belief that they're greedy and, and avarice, um, rather than fully understanding where that misconception really comes from. Racial affinities. Dwarves associate with many demi-human and humanoids, though their relations are poor with almost all of them. Relations with elves are often strained. Dwarves do not understand elven psychology and do not consider their codes of honor to be particularly particular or reliable. Dwarves work well with halflings in business matters, but tend to limit interactions to commercial relationships. Human cultures and society vary widely, so dwarven relationships with humans are widely as well, very widely as well. Dwarves, dwarves humans can appear as honorable as any dwarf or as loathsome as a god. Two dwarves, I'm sorry. Two dwarves. Humans can appear as honorable as any dwarf or as loathsome as a goblin. Dwarves often consider gnomes to be their friends and allies. Gnomish culture most closely mirrors dwarven so social and cultural mores. However, certain gnomish characteristics can ignite a dwarf's short temper particularly if gnomes and dwarves find themselves coveting the same resources 
dwarves bear great animity for goblins, orcs, and their kin, for they are locked in a timeless struggle between the earth, uh, beneath the earth. With these creatures, dwarves have few dealings other than by the sharp edge of a sword or axe. Another hated enemy of the dwarves are the ogres and giants often found in mountainous passes. Giants treat dwarves as a tasty food source, and ogres prey upon, temp uh, prey upon tempting dwarven caravans. Dwarves are always wary of these enemies and war with them constantly. Environment. Most often, dwarves live beneath the earth in great halls of stone, stretching for miles under expansive mountain chains. These dwarven kingdoms often extend deep into the bowels of the earth as they mine further for precious metals and stones. Some clans, however, spend much of their lives above ground, building tunnels only for mining and not as abodes. These dwarves live in areas where massive underground stoneworks are difficult to build due to lack of proper stone or simply impracticality. Small dwarven communities can be found in even the most remote of environments, uh, environs, for dwarves explore the world's borderlands, ever searching for new veins of ore. Racial traits and abilities. So they do have an animosity towards elves, and this is going to give them a minus two penalty to charisma checks when dealing with elves to whom they are not closely associated. So this would not translate to negative penalty of charisma checks with uh, elves in their own party. Deep Vision. Ages spent beneath the earth in the dark and quiet places of the world have imbued dwarves with the ability to see in darkness where a human would find it impenetrable. This vision extends to 120 feet in even the darkest of nights and deepest tunnels. Colors tend to erode with deep vision and objects appear in many shades of gray. It is otherwise. It is otherwise like normal sight, and dwarves can function well with no light at all. Bright lights, such as from a lantern or other light sources, spoil deep vision. A dwarf requires one minute to adjust his or her eyes when the light source is extinguished before gaining full use of deep vision. All right, so that's an important thing to remember. Like, if you have dwarves in your group in castles and crusades, and a uh, you know a, a wizard is using continual light on a staff to illuminate the area. The dwarf's uh, dark uh, deep vision is not going to function unless he is well ahead of that um, continual light spell and 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 not looking back to you know look fully into it and ruin his deep vision. It will take him up full minute to recover his deep vision. So it's an important thing to uh, to think about when you're being a castle keeper for a, group, a mixed party group and dwarves are in them. Determine depth and direction. The world beneath the mountains and in the deeps of the earth is a natural home for the dwarf. Dwarves can sense their approximate depth, on, uh, depth underground and natu as naturally as humans can sense which way is up. A dwarf can determine direction underground just as easily. All right, so they virtually can't get lost underground. Um, and and they, they can always sense their depth uh, in, into the earth. So that, that would be an important piece of information if the, uh, you know, if the party is you know, the rest of the party is getting a sense of being lost, then the dwarf is their guide uh, to get them out of any complex uh, tunnel system and such. Animinity for goblins and orcs. Eternal wars against goblins and orcs have created an undying crucible of hatred for these vile creatures. And, and so basically dwarves get a bonus uh, plus one to hit these creatures. Um, they have a similar distrust for half orcs who are find, uh, interbreeding with goblinoids to be the worst of all sins and their powerful antipathy towards 
pure goblinoids negatively affects dwarven relations with half-orcs. Dwarves suffer a minus four to charisma checks when interacting with half-orcs, goblins, and orcs. Again, <coughs> that would not necessarily reflect, although they don't say it, um, that might not necessarily reflect the same way with half-orcs and the dwarves' party. Um, as a castle keeper, I would probably still... I would have a talk with both the dwarf character, uh, player character, and the half orc player character, and and see if they can role play that distrust and uh, you know and potential disgust out, um, and and slowly over time work away that minus four charisma check. They generally don't have to do charisma checks within a party. Um, you know, but that that's something that I would I would certainly like to see role played out a little bit uh, in a mixed party group. Defensive expertise against giants and ogres. Uh, so they get a plus four bonus to armor class when combating giants and ogres. That's huge. That is a huge defensive, uh, you know, boost. So really impressive. Uh, they resist arcane magic, so they get a plus three bonus to all saving throws against arcane spells and spell-like effects. Resistance to fear, they get a plus two bonus to all saves against fear. Resistance to poison, a plus two bonus uh, to all poison saves, and that's a constitution-based. Um, that's a constitution-based save, so. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to make a constitution check. And if constitution is one of the dwarfs, uh, one of the dwarfs primary attributes, um, they basically only need to roll a 10 on a D 20, uh, with their saving throw. So that's a pretty good chance. Stone crafting as a wisdom based, uh, skill, uh, dwarves spend much of their lives carving halls, castles, and so on. Uh, let's see. Uh, dwarfs passing within 10 feet of one of these features is entitled to a wisdom check at plus two uh, to recognize the feature. That's like detecting um, concealed doors or secret doors and such. Uh, let's see what else. Should a dwarf activity search for these features, the bonus to the wisdom check is a plus four. So if they're actively searching uh, for secret doors, they have a plus four on that check. They can also glean uh, bits of knowledge, such as which race created the feature, its approximate age, and if applicable, the approximate value of the stone or metal object as well. So, yeah, they're um, they're quite skilled with uh, with stone crafting, as you can see. Languages are common: dwarven, gnome, goblinoid, halfling, elves, uh, ogreish, giant, and troll. And now we get to, they are a size small. Their movement is 20 feet. Their typical classes are fighter, rogue, barbarian, cleric, and bard. Their attribute modifiers are a plus one to constitution, a minus one to dexterity. Rogue and assassin modifiers, they get a plus two fine traps in structures only. All right. So only inside, um, only inside places, uh, outside, outdoors, they would not get that bonus. All right. And there we have, there we have the dwarf in Castles and Crusades. So as I described in the very beginning, there's there's a lot of different nuances here and, and just a better explanation of where dwarven's uh, stereotypical stubbornness or greed or or whatnot, you know, really comes from. And, and so Castles and Crusades, the writing of Castles and Crusades um, just takes some of these, uh, you know, some of these stereotypes that we hold and not just pokes holes in them, but, but actually gives uh, better explanations of them as well. So it, it's really masterful work uh, that, uh, you know, both Stephen and and, and Davis have done with castles and crusades and, and really taking a, a much more, um, a much broader view 
of um, of resource uh, in looking at these different things. They're not just looking at Lord of the Rings. They're not just looking at you know Dungeons and Dragons and and <coughs> how these classes and races are, are typically looked at. Um, you know, they go much more. Uh, they go much more into history and folklore and such than I've seen in other game systems. So it, it really is impressive. And, you know, it, it's amazing. I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons or, or other fantasy role-playing games, whether tabletop or even on the computer and, and such, uh, for decades, for 40 plus years. And reading Troll Lord games you know views on these things and, and how they present uh these things uh is it just comes off as so fresh for me it's just such a fresh look at it that i, I think it's truly impressive so um uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and um you know i certainly enjoyed digging deeper into um you know into these uh these character race spotlights and and Looking at each of them now in order, uh, I, I jumped ahead with uh, half elf and half orc uh, because of the context of the timing of it. Uh, but the next one following up will be elf. Uh, these might be a little bit delayed. Uh, this one's going to go up today, but uh, future installments because I'm going. I'm leaving tomorrow for a uh, gaming convention, and I won't be back until Sunday, and so uh, there'll be a little bit of a delay. Look to my channel for live streams over the next four days, and and there should be like a, a daily wrap up of each day, starting with tomorrow night. I'm going to do a test live stream, um, even though the actual event doesn't begin until Friday morning. Uh, but I will do a little test live stream tomorrow, and then uh, I will continue on through the rest of the uh, the rest of the weekend. Um, uh, to do those kind of wrap ups. And then I'll be back to my regular um, video uh, uploads on this channel, um, most likely beginning Monday. So as always, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And uh, the sub count uh, just reached uh, 2,700 yesterday. So uh, thank you all for, you know, having come on in and, uh, you know, and hit that subscribe button and uh, hopefully you hit the alert button as well. So you'll get, uh, you'll get news on, on future uploads and such. And, uh, as always, I mean, keep on gaming out there, enjoy yourselves, uh, you know, with this hobby, look for other, um, you know, expand your, uh, expand your access to as many different game systems as you can. Uh, because it's just going to make you a better game master, a better dungeon master, a better castle keeper, uh, and a better player um, by just expanding your, um, you know, expanding your collection uh, and uh, expanding your resources and what you're taking a look at, uh, see what you can uh, take from uh, to bring to your own gaming table as well. So uh, as always, Thanks for stopping in, and I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon, and uh, hopefully in, in live play uh, over these next couple of months uh, when I hit uh, at least one more convention this year, and then I'll be prepping for next year's uh, big ones. I'm hoping to go to Gary Con in 2024, and that will be the big, big convention for myself that year. So... Have a good one. Take care.